हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द जेट टेस्ट इन एंड एज वी हैड डिस्कस्ड इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो अबाउट द वाट इज द हाईपोजिट टेस्टिंग एंड हाउ वी सॉल्व द हाईपोजिट टेस्टिंग बाई इन सम स्टेटिस्टिकल मैथड लेट्स जेट टेस्ट टी टेस्ट काई स्क्वायर टेस्ट अनोवा टेस्ट देर आर मैनी मैथड्स वी कैन यूज टू टेस्ट द हाईपोजिट टेस्टिंग लेट्स वी हैव अवन हाईपोजिट let's we have one data set this is your data set and this is your sample so we want to compare that this sample belong to this data set or this is the two data set so we want to compare that both data set are same or not so for that what we will do we will create one hypothesis it means we will create one null hypothesis h not in h not we will say that this sample is belong to this data set or we can say that this data set 1 or this data set 2 are same so our null hypothesis will be this belong to this and both are the same what would be the alternate alternate would be the opposite of this it means doesn't belong to this to check the null hypothesis or to verify the null hypothesis of this type of the problem we use the jet test so what are the conditions where we can apply the jet test first condition is that population variance we should know the population variance it means we should know the pop this is the population it means data set we should know the pop variance or standard deviation of this data set first condition is that second condition is that sample size should be or greater than 30 it means if we collect the sample so the size of the sample should be greater than 30 second condition is that so if we want to apply the jet test in hypothesis testing then we should always verify these two condition before applying to the jet test third condition is that we assume that the population is a normally distributed this condition we assume that whatever the data set is being given to us that data set will be normally distributed and the another condition is that what is the jet formula jet formula is that x minus mu divided by sigma upon root n so in that case if our n is very large n is very large let's we have a 100 sample size in that case what would happen in that case your sigma it means population standard deviation approximate equal to the sample standard deviation so in that case we can replace this equation like this as divided by root n and all the samples observations are random and independent so whatever the samples we will collect from the data set from the population those samples should be collected randomly and should be independent and if we distribute the jet let's if we have a jet details if we plot those jet details then we will get the mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1 so for that you can follow my jet statistics or jet score video how it works and these two points i have already covered it, it says that we can compare the sample mean and population mean it means this particular data set we have and this is your sample so how we will compare we will compare the mean of these two data it means mean of the population and mean of the sample and second point this point says that how we compare the two data set we can compare the by using the mean of the population this type of the problems or we can say the case we use the one sample jet test and when we compare the two populations then we use the two sample jet test let's understand jet test by using one example here we have one manufacturing company and of a printing machine we have one manufacturing company a printing machine and that printing machine claim that their printing machine can print 500 pages per minute 
एंड देर इज वन एक्स वाई जेड कंपनी दे वॉन्ट टू बाई दिस प्रिंटिंग मशीन सो फॉर दैट वॉट दे डिड दे टुक सम रैंडम सैम्पल्स ऑफ हंड्रेड मशीन एंड प्रिंट द पेपर एंड दे फाउंड दैट एवरेज प्रिंट इज फोर नाइन्टी पेजेस पर मिनट एंड द स्टैंडर्ड एवियशन इज थर्टी सो शुड दे बाई और नॉट Our question is that if these conditions or these points or these things are given, so in that case, this X Y Z company should buy this printing machine or not. So our confidence level, our our confidence level is giving ninety five. It means our alpha would be one minus confidence level. It means one minus zero point nine five. so we can say that alpha would be 0.05 total number of samples is 100 machine so we have already denoted n is equal to 100 and standard deviation of samples is 30 so standard deviation we have x is equal to 30 and standard deviation of population this is the printing machine can print 500 pages per minute it means Average printing with population mean. Population mean is given the 500, and sample mean 490. We have given the 490. The null hypothesis will be will buy when page is greater than or equal to 500 pages per minute. So this X Y Z company should buy this printing machine if the average printing is greater than or equal to 500 pages per minute. And what is the alternate hypothesis? Alternate hypothesis will not buy. So this is the two-tail test or a one-tail test. This would be a one-tail test because we have to only verify the alternate hypothesis in a one direction. Is less than page should be less than five hundred. If we are able to get less than 500, then our alternate hypothesis will be accepted, and we will reject the null hypothesis. So, what is the formula of Z-test? Z-test formula is x bar minus mu divided by sigma, again divided by root n. So, we can say that x bar it means mean of the sample. Sample mean we have 490 minus mu. It means population mean. Population mean we have 500. Then sigma is the standard deviation of population. That is is the 30. So here, why we use sample mean here? The question is that if you see this particular, if you see this particular, when we have a large sample, then sample variance is approximately equal to the population variance. So here our sample size is, if you see, our sample size is very large. So we can say that our population variance will approximately equal to the sample mean. So that's why I replace sigma with s. It means sample standard deviation 30, then divided by root 100. Then if you will calculate this, you you will get the minus 3.33. So just draw these particular things. Let's. This is mu equal to zero. So, Z test, Z test. So we can say that this is your in the left direction minus three point three three. So this value we get by using the Z test. Now, what is the confidence level? Confidence level is ninety five. So we can get the critical value. Critical value is zero point zero five. One minus C L means confidence level one minus zero point. Nine five. So by doing that, you will get alpha is equal to zero point zero five. So now we have to calculate the Z value corresponding to this particular critical value. So how we calculate that? So for that, our alpha is giving zero point zero five. So we need to calculate the Z value corresponding to this value. So This is the area. This is the area. Area is giving. It means, it means let let this is your z. So we can say this is your alpha. So this this area is giving, and we want to know what would be the value corresponding to this particular point. What would be the critical value? 
so for that we will use the jet table so in the jet table we will verify what would be the value of 0.05 let's go to the jet table we need to calculate the jet value 0.05 so let's calculate 0.05 so now calculate so our alpha is equal to given 0.05 Zero five. This is the area. So we need to calculate the corresponding Z value. So let's verify zero point zero five. Zero point zero five. Zero five zero five. We can say that this this value. This is approximately equal to zero point zero five. So we can say that this value and this value so we can say that minus 1.6 plus minus 0.04 so we will get minus 1.64 so z value will be minus 1.64 this is your this is your z value z value is minus 3.33 so this area red area so this red area is your testing area this is your testing area and what is the z value z value we got 1.64 it means complete this dotted blue area this blue area is your critical region so you can see here our red area resides inside the critical region so we can reject the null hypothesis it means buyer should not buy the this printing machine so this way we can solve some real world problems so that's it for today i hope you will like this video if you have any query or any question you can write in the comment section i will try to answer all of your queries have a nice day thank you very much for watching my video